The following is a presentation of the Control Trends Podcasting Network. Hey, hey, what's up, HVAC Control Pro? This is Eric Stromquist here with Stromquist Company and ControlTrends.com. Hey, man, I got a special tech tip for you today. Brent Burrows from Entech, the young tech that uh, has been contributing with his HVAC tech tips, is in the field having trouble with a back net problem, trying to get a train voyager to talk back net. He walks you through the process. Good stuff. Many thanks to Brent. Hey, if you got uh, a tech tip and you want to share it, reach out to me, HVACcontrolpro at gmail.com. Uh, I'll edit the video. I'll get it posted, and I'll give you all, all, all the credit for it. In this case, special thanks to Brent Burles, Entek, E-N-T-E-K-I-N-C.com out of Atlanta. All right, thanks. We'll see you on the flip side. What's going on, guys? Brent Burrows with Entech here uh, on this beautiful Tuesday morning out here. There it is. There's the sun somewhere up there. Um, so out here in the field, uh, trying to integrate a few rooftops, pulling their back net cards. And I've been running into an issue with the uh, with unit conversion, and some units are working one way, some units are working the other, uh, and it's causing issues when these units are running. So what we're working with today is uh, set that down. Working on this train unit, uh, it's Voyager, and we're trying to pull in this BCIR and get all the points mapped, get everything working like it's supposed to. Uh, so anytime you're working with these BCIRs and they're coming new kind of like this, you've got to uh, make sure that you have uh, the train batnet tool downloaded so that you can set stuff like the device ID, uh, the unit uh, conversion, which is what uh, the issue that we're having, and then the writable points, fun stuff like that. So I'm gonna hop over here to the computer, show you the issue that I'm going through and see if we can get it resolved. All right, so the issue we're having, I mentioned was with unit conversion. You can see down here that I've got all of these rooftop units pulled in and they all look like they're the same. same train, BCIR, uh, Precedent, Voyager, Odyssey. So one of the units that I've, everything's going great with is what is this number five? You can see all these points pulled into here. Everything looks pretty normal. Uh, space temperature set point, discharge air temp, discharge air set point. Uh, so what we're going to do now, the one we're having issues with, is this number three. You can see the discharge air temp looks like a normal reading, but these active set points of 12.7 and the set point at 12.78 is what's giving me issues. So everything's coming over correct in Fahrenheit, but the problem is the device facets and the facets right here are in Celsius. So um, I believe, and hopefully, you know, don't call me out too bad if I'm wrong, but 4.4 uh, uh, Celsius should equal about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And I don't know, 26 is too big of a number, but I can come back over here and I can look at this. What is this? Oh, hold on. Ah, that's it. I was looking at the wrong point. So this is the discharge air cooling set point, BAS. Uh, you saw those facets between basically 4 and 26. And then when I come over here, same point, discharge air cooling set point, BAS. 40 and 80. So these are the same two devices, or uh, same model controller on the same type of units, and I've got different device facets and uh, and ranges for the min and max. So I'm having this issue, and I believe it has something to do with this train backnet setup tool, which is right here. Uh, so this train backnet setup tool, anytime you're working with these up. Uh, away from that fan. Uh, anytime you're working with these BCIRs or BCIIs, you need to use this train batnet setup tool to set the baud rate, uh, the device ID, and then swap over these units. So these, uh, all of these got done by the same tech, and you know there's like three of them working, two of them aren't. So, uh, so I'm out here trying to figure out 
what is going on. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the unit off. Now, I know you can't see it. That is what I'm doing. Maybe you heard that click. Is I'm going to turn it off and then I am going to hook up my computer directly to this BCIR, not using a BatNet router or anything like that. And see what we can find out. All right. So you actually, when you're doing these BCIRs, and uh, I'm not sure about the BCI, I'd, I'd have to check on that. When you're doing these BCIRs, you don't have to have power connected on them to set them up. The, uh, the USB that you connect through your computer will actually give it power. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to disconnect, and I want to connect to another device. So there we go. Wait for that to kind of fill in, and we go connect. So we can see, this is the one that we were looking at that we were having issues with. Baud ray, we're communicating with it correctly, and everything was set to was set to IP just like the other unit. So we're going to try and get a fresh start. Uh, you have to click somewhere down here on this bottom left hand side. Uh, not sure if you can see my mouse, but it's right at this bottom line where it says send the device and cancel all the way at the bottom left and you'll see this thing come up that'll say clear controller so that's what we're going to do it's going to basically reset the configuration so we've hit that it's going to do its thing Gosh, I keep hearing these sounds through my computer alright it says please select SI default imperial or custom units so now, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead, we're going to set that. So we save that there. We're going to come back in here, name this RTU3. That's good. That's good. So we'll send that to the device, so now it's got the device name. So now it doesn't recognize any points present in the device. That's because we've cleared it out and it's going to build up this points list once we uh, power it back up and it's got all the, um, it can talk to all the boards inside here. So we're going to disconnect our computer from the unit, turn the power back on. So now the power's been put back on the unit. I'm going to reconnect to the controller. All right, guys, sorry about that. I just had to uh, power cycle the unit, disconnect my computer, and wait for a few seconds. So now we're going to connect back to this controller. It's connecting. There we go. It's got the device name. It's got the units. And it should be waiting to build up this points list. There we go. So that's why we had to disconnect from the controller, power cycle the unit, and then turn it back on. Uh, but we couldn't have our laptop connected because that would have kept it powered up. And it would have never been able to uh, build this list. So we enable the BAS control selection. And then we're going to go ahead and select all. That way we can write to all these points. And the sensors, we're just going to say space temperature. So we're going to save that, and that should be good. So we should be done here in the BACnet setup tool, and then I'm going to come back in here, I'm going to power my router back up, there it is. So now i got this back going. And we just got to wait to see when I can start get, getting some traffic on my router. Oh, helps when you plug it in. I've been unplugging a bunch of stuff from this board, so I'm trying to get all this back going. All right, there we go.
picking up some router traffic now. So what I'm going to do... There's all those devices coming in. Do this discovery, try and pick it up pretty quick. So I'm kind of teed into the network right now, so things are a little bit slower. Uh, not a best practice, but works while I am on top of this roof. Are you serious? There we go. All right. So there we go. There we go. Now we are looking at these. Obviously, they still have those old units in them. What we're going to do now is we are going to delete that. We're going to rediscover all these points. And like I said, being teed in the network like I am, it's probably going to take a second. Alright, so there we go. Now we're going to go back. We're going to look for those temperatures. Bam. Infinite min. Max 158. That's good. But the big one was our active set point. We were kind of sitting there and we didn't have, I think our, uh, our before for our cooling set point was 4 Fahrenheit to 26. There we go. 40 and 80. So now, set this to true. Got that pulled in. I'll go back up here. I'll grab my active set point. Put that in. Remember these numbers were 12 degrees earlier. So I can set this up. Make change, you can see took that right. Now we just gotta wait for that active set point. There you go, you see it change. So we got the problem resolved. Now I just gotta go do it to a couple other units and should be good to go. Uh, hope this helped out. Uh, I know sometimes reading through the or integration or the setup guides can be tedious and all the, uh, the gotchas aren't you know in big bold letters at the top of the page. So hopefully you see this video, you encounter this problem, it helps you out. I will catch you guys later, bye. It's the light coming through the